Africa and standing before um, several hundred women um, to be able to teach before them, standing before my family is that much harder and um, very hard. And so I just recently found out that I was going to be sharing something. And um, I told Brian even today, I said, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> but um, when, we, when we started, Brian, um, God gave Brian a verse for our family. And um, I'm just going to read it because I don't want to mess it up. It's Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And that is a verse that we've claimed this whole time. And God has provided this whole, um, I, I say six years from the total at the beginning of the time that we went, or it started, and then we went. Um, you know, God, um, back whenever God, uh, Brian shared with me that we were going to go to Africa, I always knew or felt that we were going to go to Central America like Brian has shared. And so when he said that we were going to go to Africa, I wanted to go to Africa on a two-week short-term mission. <laughs> so to go long-term, that wasn't my idea. Um, but <laughs> for Brian, it, it was... You know, it was kind of a shock, actually, when Brian shared with me that that's what God was calling us to do. And uh, I remember being at work um, with the ladies at my nursing job. And when I went to tell them that I was going to be leaving because I was going to go to Africa, and, um, you know, they couldn't, you know, they didn't understand why I was going to Africa. And I said, you know, I was submitting to my husband because he was submitting to God's call on our lives to go. And you know, people don't understand the word submission anymore. And they couldn't understand, they, they kept saying, I wouldn't submit to any man. And, uh, but I know what the great word of God says. And I fear God enough to know that if, you know, if I'm not gonna submit to him and to my husband, I fear that. And so um, time went on and as one day I was driving, you know, because I still wasn't, you know, 100% about it. And one day I was driving home for work, and I was down um, uh, almost home, and uh, I was, you know, talking to God, and I was telling him, you know, Lord, I don't want to go to Africa. I wanted to go to Africa, you know, just to go for two weeks or so, and I don't want to move there. I don't want to give up my career that I've had for 30-some years. And um, I was at the top of my pay scale, and uh, plus our family was here. I mean, Titus is at home, but we have grandchildren and our daughters. And I remember talking to him and saying that, you know, but I'll do whatever you want me to do, Lord. And uh, it was like the next day or so, I was in at work, and I was at lunch, and there was a drug rep there. And uh, I was sitting at the table, and I was talking and sharing what we were going to do in Africa. And he overheard the conversation, and he asked, you know, what you know, we were going to Africa for, and I said, well, we're moving there as missionaries. Well, everybody always thinks you're going to go build something. You know, you're always doing that kind of humanitarian type stuff. And I said, we're going to go share the word of God with the people of Zambia and whatever else God has in store for us. And, uh, you know, he said to me that, you know, he says, you know, I always wanted to go on the mission field. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, how come you didn't go? And he said to me, he said, because my wife didn't want to go. So she didn't want to go, so he never fulfilled what he felt he should do. And, um, you know, I just shared with him the reason why I, you know, was going to submit to God and, and go, because I feared the Lord. And uh, so, you know, we went on, and then um, we, we, we left. And... Um, Proverb, when I first got there, you know, I was still, you know, kind of struggling, and God gave me um, a verse in Proverbs 20, 21, 13. And I'm reading, because that's in Proverbs for the day on the 21st, and so I was reading. And I came down to verse 13, and it says, Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. 
And so I was like, okay, Lord, you know, because, you know, we're in a place that there's a lot of poverty. And uh, so I didn't want to, you know, I was like, I took heed to that verse. I didn't want to stop my, you know, from the cry of the people. And uh, so I posted that verse. I don't remember if you, the team remembers or not, but I have it posted on my refrigerator. It should still be there unless it's fallen off. But um, it posted on my refrigerator so I can look at that every day. And as a reminder that I didn't want to stop listening to the people. And uh, so the first thing I did when I got over there is I wanted to, outside of all the other little things, I wanted to learn how to drive because being at the mission, you know, we're out in the boonies and uh, I was not going to be stuck there. You know, if Brian was out doing things, I was determined I was going to drive. And it's crazy driving in there. And um, so I learned how to drive and uh, did all that. Now, I went shopping. Lorna took me shopping, and she would take me into the cities. Now, we used to have to drive a half hour, an hour, you know, just to go to shopping. And uh, Lorna is a crazy driver. She learned it from me. But she said, Bobby taught me. No, she said, Robert taught me. (laughs) So how to drive. But she is a crazy driver. And going into um, the capital, Lusaka, oh man, that was, I, I didn't, I drove in that one time and I didn't like it. And she would just speed through there. But anyway, so she, she helped me with that. Now the first year, that's what she did. She took me shopping, she took me to the main cities and stuff, where to go for parts for vehicles and all that kind of stuff. And so um, that was the first year, is just trying to get used to the culture and trying to get used to just the surroundings and everything, and uh, Lorna was, she was my go-to, and uh, then I came home that 2017, because Tanya was getting married, and I came home that year, and then we were up in Monmouth that year when we got the call that Lorna had passed away, and uh, so when we went back, we went back that, uh, I can't remember, but we went back, and then after a little bit, then I started doing the treasury of the organization GCMS. And uh, that was a huge job, a huge responsibility. And uh, so it it had a lot of um, ups and downs in that, but um, there was struggles with that. Um, Not anything financial, but it's just with family, just working together with a family, trying to homeschool Titus and doing other things. And so, um, I needed help in the house, and so I'd been praying about finding someone to be able to help, you know, to do little things, because we wanted to help a family, but I wanted the right person, and uh, so we were praying about that, and uh, I talked to Brian about what he thought about Precious, which is Gift Kapika's wife, and, uh, you know, he said, yeah, so we prayed about it. Well, then we talked to her husband first, because we didn't want to do anything to disrupt the family, Um, because Gift was already um, working with Brian as far as um, working with him and taking him around and and being his interpreter. So we talked to Gift, and he said, you know, yes, they would. And so Precious came to start helping, and she helped three days a week. And she taught me a lot, and and I missed that family. And uh, she named, she had two kids, they had two children, and then she got pregnant, and then... um, had their third and named their third one after Becky Bonner. And uh, because Becky and Bobby were there and and ministered to them alongside with um, Gift and them. And then um, when we came back this time, um, we got, Brian got a text from them. And I thought whenever, when we were home the last time before we left, I thought she had a little pooch, but you know, you just don't say anything to, to women anymore. So it's like, And I said, finally, I said to her, I said, Precious, I said, are you pregnant? And she would laugh and say, no, you know, no. But sometimes, you know, they say, no, but mean, yes. But so anyway, I didn't, I just went on. I didn't think she, you know, was like, okay, she's not pregnant. So then we got a text from Gift saying that they had a baby. (laughs) And they named her Tammy, Abigail Tammy. And uh, so that, that's an honor. And, um. So I miss them dearly, and um, they're the missionary, the family that went up to Syringi, and Brian's talked about that before. So some of the things that I've been able to be involved in uh, was the ministry with the ladies. 
Uh, Lorna had been doing that for a long time. And then I started uh, going in and teaching with that. And then as much as I could, I couldn't do it all the time because I was trying to homeschool Titus and be with him, but I was doing tre- all that kind of stuff. And so anyway, I was trying to do the teaching. And then I had the ladies over one day. I had, you know, some of you ladies have brought me teacups because I wanted to, you know, do that and do something different just to be able to minister to the ladies and love on the ladies. And so I had, there's probably about 15 of the ladies that was women ministry over to the house and I had the tables all set up and I fixed spaghetti because I didn't want to do their their normal they're used to they know spaghetti they know what spaghetti is and so I didn't want to do their normal meal I wanted to do spaghetti and I did salad and precious helped me that day and dessert and all of that so I did a big big pot of spaghetti okay so there's about 15 ladies and so we're <laughs> we're serving the ladies and they, their plates were just piled high. I mean, piled high. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are they going to be able to eat that? Because <laughs> it was so much. But those ladies, I mean, no matter how long they stood there, they ate all of it. And then after that, they asked me where the enchima was. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> I didn't want to do the enchima because you guys always have the enchima. Tammy. Next time you have enchima, we're not full, we're not satisfied until we have the enchima. I said, okay, next time. But, you know, there wasn't a next time with that. But um, anyway, so ladies, whoever sent the teacups, because we did have coffee in our teacups over there, and we had a good time. Um, one of the, one, the ministries that um, I helped with a lot was um, one of the guys' names was Bedford. He was, um, when, he, when we first came, he was a guy, he, he came out and he set it on the stoops. And when we would drive out through the gates, you know, we'd see what, you know, he needed. Well, he needed to talk to Doc, John. And so, but we were told that he was a drunk, and maybe he was in the past, I don't know. But anyway, so later on, he come to ask us, ask us if we, he, we could help. And we helped him with some things, but then he got sick And he has cancer and um, different things going on with his kidneys and things. So, you know, I just, you know, I just loved on him and I helped him. So even to this day, well, until Crystal and them came back, we were helping him with the medications and things that he needed. And uh, he was so appreciative of the things that we were able to help him with. But, you know, these things we couldn't have done without you guys supporting us and taking care of us financially. And um, we took care of, helped take care of uh, Gift's mom. She was a widow. She lived right down the road. And uh, she was an older lady, I'd say probably in her 90s, late 80s, 90s. And she was a widow. And one of the things that Lorna did was take care of the widows, which she would take them things for Christmas time and do different things. So I wanted to help her with that too. And plus, Gift came to Brian whenever he went to Syringe and said to Brian to take care of my mom, you know, because she was going to be gone. And so we did for a little bit because then John came back and said that he wanted to do that because Lorna did that. And so, but she was a sweet little lady, you know, just walked barefooted down the road, you know, she have her hoe up on her back, you know, she'd be coming in from the field. She still worked in the field at 90, 80, late 80s, 90s. And she couldn't speak English, maybe just a panini, which is a little, very, very little. But we still had just just exchanged smiles. And just I still talked to her, even though she couldn't understand things that I said if there wasn't an interpreter. I hugged her and loved on her. Um, Another thing that we did ministry-wise is that the Lord laid on my heart was for the clinic, the Mashili Clinic that's been there for quite some time, was I had gone down to look at the clinic and tour, And one of the things is on their wall, they had this whole list of stuff, items, that women that are pregnant have to bring. You know, plus they had on there 50 kwacha for ambulance fee. And so I was asking about that, well, what is this for? And they go, well, the moms have to bring. So they have to take everything. You know, here, it's provided at the hospital. They have to literally take everything there. So one of the things that I wanted to do is I started buckets and doing buckets and then filling it with um, 
all kinds of things, the syringes, the, th the lances, all those things that they needed to, to have their baby. Because the moms that couldn't afford those, you know, I wanted, if they're, they're going to have their child forever, how long the Lord has them. So I wanted them to be able to ha go there and get taken care of, and then they can worry about the other things. And then we put a track and things in there. And the goal was is that we would go follow up um, with them to be able to share the gospel. Um, some of them even came from Quit Kitwe or Lasaka because their parents were here. Mom was here. Another thing that we did was girls, uh, daisies for girls, and that was the sanitary pads and the kits and things from a, a church here in the States did those, and then I would take them over in suitcases or whoever would be coming would send them over in suitcases. And so Crystal and I had the opportunity to go to one of the schools in town in Lawancha, and uh, we asked, you know, the ladies... The young ladies that would be most in need, those are the ones that we wanted to share with. So Crystal shared the gospel, and we did that, and, and all of them raised their hands to come forward to, to be saved. So Crystal will continue um, doing that as long as she has the kids and things. And so that is one thing that's on my heart that I want to keep doing and help sending to her. Um, then we had um, a mother of twins that this was, they were born while we were here stateside. But um, Crystal and them had contacted us, and the mom had died giving or shortly after birth of the twins. And so we helped provide the formula that they needed um, for the year. We just finished that up, I think it was right before they left to come back in September. So we provided those things, and she gave blankets and things like that in the beginning. So those are things that you've helped with as well, to be able to continue ministering to the people. And, um, the, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, you guys are family. I didn't look at the clock to see how much time I had or taken, but... You know, you guys are family, and, and I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things I said here before I left, before we left to go to Zambia, was that I didn't want us to be forgotten. You know, because a lot of times you get to the field, and, um, you know, some missionaries are, you know, they may not, they may be prayed for and stuff, but, you know, they, they've sometimes, you know, have been forgotten. And I didn't want to be forgotten. But, you know, you guys didn't forget us. And uh, you guys have prayed for us faithfully. You know, we have never gone without. Not once. We've been able to minister to the people and share the gospel. And um, we've been able to do the ministry and, and carry that out because of you guys. And uh, we love you guys. Um, thank you for your investment in our lives. And, um, you know, when I came back, when we came back and, um, you know, I had my stroke in December. And um, I know now that I had at least probably one stroke that when I was over there in Zambia, um, just with the symptoms and stuff, but they subsided. And so when I went to the clinic there, you know, they told me, the one doctor that I seen said it was stress and uh, didn't tell me that it was a stroke or anything, but um, it was stress and anxiousness. And uh, I'm like, okay. And then, um, then I went to see another doctor, and then they did a, she did an EKG, and then put me on medication there that just bottomed my heart rate down so much that it was like, you know, you get to like in the 30s, and where you just, you want to pass out. And so um, I adjusted my own medication because the, the whole pill was too much. But I didn't want to go off the half, into off of it, and to do the half. So anyway, God sustained that until we were able to get back home. And then, you know, for, unfortunately, I had another stroke, two strokes, um, in December. And um, praise God that all of the side effects that I had, you know, those have gone away. Um, but, you know, with the doctor's still tell me, you know, that I can still have another stroke or more, and, uh, but I have a bigger God than that, and not saying that I won't ever, but I'm just saying that I have to trust in the Lord. He's always been faithful to me, and, um, you know, we've been able to do the ministry and give to the poor at God's leading without any, you know, disruptions, 
And um, so I just believe that, you know, when following, now I'm not saying that we haven't had our struggles and frustrations and things like that, because we have. It doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to have those frustrations and um, things that go on. But um, God has provided, and he's taken care of us. And, uh, you know, Brian and I were talking today that, um, you know, we never had a flat tire. We never ran out of fuel driving because that was one thing that Lorna taught us. You never let it go below a fourth of a tank. And uh, so we never did. <laughs> Brian might have. I, I, try, I try not to. <laughs> But, um, you know, he has sustained us, and he's used, used you guys, and uh, you guys are a family. And, um, you know, I want to go back, and uh, it really bothers me that we, we're not, and I know that God's changing it, but, you know, I had plans. <laughs> Don't we usually have plans? And uh, I had plans because I still had... Um, I had more women's kits and things to, to give out. I had we, uh, one of the churches here just had donated. The whole church had collected things for babies. And we filled up the barrels and just sent them. And they just came like in July, you know, there. And uh, to do mo more Moms for Buckets. And uh, I wasn't done. <laughs> you know, it was like um, I wasn't done. And I still had, you know, the ladies' ministry that I was wanting to, to do things and change up. And, and uh, so please pray for me. I know that God has changed the direction. Um, also, still, I ha you know, all my kitchen stuff's there. You know, I took, if I took the container, the one thing I wanted was all of my kitchen stuff. If anything else didn't go, it was my kitchen stuff that I wanted. And um, so it's there. <laughs> So, anyway, I love you guys. We love you guys. And thank you for all your financial support, your prayers, and your love. 